Welcome to yet another episode of Founders Five, and today's episode is a little extra special for me. It is special because I'm interviewing somebody whose brand I've always been intrigued with. Meet Dr. Navneet Gill, a dentist by the day, a professor by the noon, and a restaurant ninja by the night. The co-owner of Ahmedabad's favorite go-to culinary space, Nini's Kitchen. What started as a passion project with her husband Ankit is now a decade-old beloved go-to spot for all Ahmedabadis. In this interview, I'm going to chat about her journey and about her juggling multiple roles from dentistry to a restauranter and how her passion and experiences have shaped her life and business. And of course, we are going to decode a lot more about Nini's Kitchen. Thank you, Navneet, for joining us um, at Founders Find. This is something I was always looking forward to. Uh, in my introduction, as I said, you know, uh, Nini's Kitchen is a brand I've always been intrigued about. And for me, it's an honor because a month back, I think I was at, yeah, you know, was at, yeah. you were at a talk when yeah. you were the moderator. And right. today it's an honor for me to kind of, you know, have my this pleasure, yeah. interesting chat with you. So, um, you know, as I told you, this the Founders Find is all about branding, right. but also knowing a lot more about the founder right. and the challenges and how you've kind of, you know, developed your yeah. business. Yeah. Um, so let's let's kind of deep dive into it. My first question to you is, you know, when I met you, that is the first time I saw Navneet. Yeah. Of course, everybody knows Ninni's Kitchen. Right. But you and Ankit are fairly introvert people. True. Which means we rarely get to see the faces. True. Uh, before we delve into the business story, tell us a bit about you and how your journey started. Uh, yeah. Because I'm very sure people are curious about it. Okay, so I'm from Chandigarh, but I've uh, grown up at multiple places because of my um, background. Right. And uh, Ankit was born in Delhi, but he's grown up in Ahmedabad. After I completed my uh, master's in dentistry uh, from Muradabad in UP, I got two options for a teaching job. One was Chhattisgarh and one was Ahmedabad. Obviously, I chose Ahmedabad. Okay. But the catch was that I did not know a single person in Ahmedabad. So my mom being my mom freaked out. She called her friend who called her friend who called her friend uh, whose son was in Australia and his friend was Ankit. So Achha. they were like, okay, kuch bhi ho jai, to call this person. Okay. It's like, okay. And then I packed one bag of jute and one bag of kapde and then I moved to Ahmedabad. And this was which year? Uh, this was 2011. Okay, nice. Okay. And then one after I kind of settled down there, I messaged Ankit and I was like, hey, do you think it's safe uh, to watch a movie alone in a theatre in Ahmedabad? And he was like, yeah, it's one of the safest cities. Go ahead and... There's nothing to worry. So that kind of opened the dialogue. Okay. And we started chatting. And then after a couple of weeks, he was like, you know what? I don't think it's very safe to step out on your own. Let me accompany you purely for your safety. Okay. So yeah, so that's how it all started. Okay. And that's how you guys met. Yeah. 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 And, and when did you guys get married? Uh, that was in 2013. Okay, so three yeah. years of worship. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. So, uh, you know, as you mentioned, you're from the army background. So being raised by a single mom in the army, I'm sure you did a lot of traveling right. um, and explored many industries. But how did you narrow down and food become your passion? Honestly, uh, food was never my passion. And I'm very embarrassed to admit that uh, I'm a terrible cook. Like I cannot cook to even save my life. Okay. But like I always say, that you don't have to be a good cook to run a successful restaurant business. Right. And uh, it was Ankit's idea to open a restaurant. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, things got very messy very quickly. And he had to spend most of the days and his nights at the restaurant. So I never got to see him. So I was like, you know, after my day job as a uh, uh, senior lecturer, let me just go and spend, try and spend some time with him. But there was no option of spending time because... Like I said, things were very messy. He was busy in the kitchen doing multitasking. So I had to, and people are screaming. Okay, things were out of control. So I had to take care of the service bit. Okay. So I was kind of involuntarily sucked into it. And before I realized, mm -hmm. I became fully a part of it. Interesting. So, yeah. And when did Nini's Kitchen start? So Nini started in 2014. 14. Okay, yeah. so this was like one year after you yeah, guys yeah, got yeah, married. Yeah. Oh, that was yeah. fast. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, from what I read about the restaurant industry, especially in India, yeah. uh, it's a very 
tough business. Yes. Right. Especially yeah. I when I read about the GSTs and yeah. the taxation. Yeah. yeah. Things a lot of things happened during COVID as well. You know, mm-hmm. there was no support. Yeah. Um. So and again, when I cut to when I think about Ahmedabad, it's a very dynamic city and it's a very volatile city for any right. brand and a food brand to survive. Right. right? right. When you started Nini's Kitchen, what were the challenges that you faced and how is it that you guys managed to overcome it? And today, as I said, I think you are 40 plus hours yeah. old now. So yeah, how did that happen? So uh, we were a bunch of naive kids uh, you know, Ankit ka sapna tha to open a nice cozy restaurant, cozy cafe where people would come and chill and have the time of their lives. Right. So... We took a franchise. We were like, okay, let them do all the mehnat. Mm. We'll just sit and count the money. Achha. But it turned out to be a scam. Okay. And we got cheated. And we were left with uh, with no background in hospitality. We were left to fend for ourselves. Wow. Okay. And uh, the worst part was that we had no finances left because whatever we had, we had invested already in making the restaurant. Right. So the financial struggle was really, really, really bad. Like I'm still get that PTSD thinking about that financial trauma that we went through. Right. Uh, staff left because they could see no future in us. Right. And uh, so we we had to do everything on our own. So Baki sir, we could manage. Like there was no staff. We would mop the floors. There was no housekeeping. We would clean the bathroom. There was no juice maker. Ankit would do the juices on his own. Everything we did on our own. But what we couldn't manage was the finances. So that was a very, very tough time. And this is one advice I would like to give to everybody who wants to start a restaurant. Jitna bhi aapne invest kiya hai, utna hi aap bank mein daliye and forget about it and treat it as your contingency plan. Right. Because for the, yes, because for the first six months to one year, you're not going to make any money. Right. But your rent will start, your salaries will start, your vendors will ask money. Right. So that is when that money will help you stay afloat. Right. We did not have that and we had a terrible, terrible time. So finances were our biggest struggle. And I think the first one year is a crucial year. So you don't want to be stressed about finances. You just want to invest more into your creativity without right, right, right. Okay. So that's interesting. Yeah. So I I didn't know this part that you had already started some other restaurant franchise. There was. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so I spoke about your challenges. Now, let's get to the basics because Founders Find is also watched by a lot of youngsters, you know, True. who um, will become entrepreneurs eventually. There are two things I've always wondered about because I'm a foodie and I'm sure youngsters also like to would like to know, how does one go about menu planning and rising? Right. And how does one go about managing and training the staff? Because I think these are very crucial factors. Right. So, um, there are two ways you can go about it. Either you're very clear the kind of cuisine you want to serve. So okay. say you want to serve Italian. Then you hire a chef who specializes in Italian. You sit down with him. You plan the menu. Okay. But please do not forget to take into consideration the local palate. So say you want, you're want you serving authentic al dente, mm-hmm. which is undercooked pasta. Correct. And you have not taken into consideration that maybe mm-hmm. your audience mm-hmm. is not aware of it. Right. And to mm-hmm. them, it'll be like, you have kacha me kacha mehda. So you have to tweak your menu a little bit, right. taking into account the kind of people you want to serve. Right. That is one way. Second thing is uh, what we did. We were a multi-cuisine restaurant and we had to please a lot of people. And like I said, we were kind of clueless at that time. So uh, the only people who guided us were our customers. <laughs> so for the first six months to one month uh, to one year, we only did what our customers told us. So if somebody would say, Ki, aapke menu mein lasagna kyo nahi hai? So we would do R&D and we would like, okay, let's put lasagna. Dal diya. Okay. Somebody would come and say, Baki sab toh achha hai, lekin sushi khane ke liye mujhe specially kahi aur jana padta hai, aap ho dal do. Right. So then we added sushi. So the hack here is that, keep your eyes and ears open, talk to your customers, listen to what they're saying and depending on that, just keep evolving. Right. Like you cannot uh, serve what you were serving in 2014, also in 2024. Absolutely. Basic things will same, but you have to give more options. You yes. have to keep on evolving. And that is why even after 10 years, uh, we kind of update our menu every six months based on the customer. I see that. Yes. 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 
and i think you've also opened multiple brands yeah, for the pelly yeah. brand to kind of yeah mm-hmm. because so the basic idea for nero was we couldn't touch ninis right hum ninis ke andar nahi anmozo dal sakte the right. because people would be like ye kyun dala hai hamara right. dal makhni dal mukhara do right so then we opened a separate brand for it because we had to evolve yeah. so i like the fact that you know you've segregated yeah. the communication is crisp and yeah. clear yeah and people now know that okay if i want to have like a shake and fries yeah, yeah, and yeah. sandwich then niros is the place yeah and yeah. for uh, like a meal meal uh, ninnis is the and for the place. teaching part uh, for the staff yeah yes. yeah so i um, have a teaching as a professor i have a teaching experience for more than 10 years and i love teaching right So I think my teaching background is really helpful when it comes to training the staff because I personally uh, take my laptop, make PPTs, and go every week to one of the outlets and train the staff. Uh, another thing is that uh, because we are in an expansion mode, mm-hmm. so our team members get ample opportunities uh, to grow within the organization. Right. So they don't have to look elsewhere to grow. Correct. And that kind of uh, helps in retaining staff despite this industry having a very high attrition absolutely okay. so that kind of so it's equally important for the staff also yeah to yeah, know yeah definitely you know the they should know. think with the yeah. vision that yeah. you all have totally. interesting totally that's interesting i might just borrow some tips from you <laughs> after this show so yes um you mentioned about you know how you guys are scaling now yeah that right? yeah. and i have seen ninnis scale exponentially right and exponentially after a certain period True. which is great i right. think you did your uh, you know you faced your challenges you did your r and d and then i think you yeah. took that step while nowadays i see youngsters you know just making or creating a brand to scale True. without having a base True. i think uh, how ninnis did it is great but um my question here is how does one plan to scale a business number one and when do you know that okay this is the right moment to step out of your comfort zone and now is the time to expand okay so um comfort zone is a very scary place to be in mm-hmm. because nothing ever grows there correct uh, like they say you know you have to step out of your comfort zone and only then the magic will happen yes um for me i think for us ideally uh the ideal time to scale up is when your restaurant is kind of uh doing a little bit of profit mm-hmm. and you don't have to interfere in the day to day operations meaning right. that you now have a solid team uh on whom you can rely right and uh, they can take care of the operations even when you're not around there so that you can now concentrate on restaurant number 2 mm-hmm. while they take care of restaurant number 1 Right. but this is not something that's going to happen over overnight it uh, might take years like i don't understand how some restaurants are opening three to four branches within a year like right. how are they doing it like i honestly would like to know because that would save us also a lot of time right. for us it took us three years to even think about opening a second restaurant so uh, yeah that's what i would suggest mm-hmm. that uh, take your time uh build a very very solid team okay and only then think of scaling up right but yeah. i think in a place like andaman especially gujarat overall i think uh, building a team is also equally challenging totally right and totally. you guys have nailed it and yeah send it to you for that <laughs> because i know how tough it is overall as an entrepreneur to yeah. build a team yeah um so since we spoke about scaling what is also connected with scaling is investments right, right. um This is a question you know I see a lot of entrepreneurs dilly dally about hmm. in terms of should one get an investor on board or is it you know that okay getting an investor is not the best thing hmm. um I don't know but is Ninnis a bootstrap brand or have you also guys you know followed the investor route so if you could kind of guide us a little bit there so every investor has a different vision right like if I want to scale up rapidly mm-hmm. then i might have to get investors on board because restaurant is a very capital intensive industry absolutely yeah nenis is still date bootstrap mm. our growth has been very organic and very sustainable right and we did not want to take on the pressure of opening x number of outlets in particular duration okay. we did not want to do that right and that's why it was a conscious decision to mm-hmm. not uh, take any investors on board and we are very happy with that decision and that's how we intend for it to be but i think once as and when if anybody wants to go the investor yeah, then i think it's, it's, 
important to have an understanding like true. somebody who doesn't true. pushes you too much true true, yeah. true. great uh, so now we've covered the beginnings yeah. the challenges yeah. planning scaling now now is my favorite part we talk <laughs> about branding yeah uh, how important it is for restaurants to you know have a marketing budget because this is something i struggle with because a lot of brands come to me they say oh i have already invested so much in my space in my logos in my you know whatever team i don't have budgets for marketing but i want the best right yeah how does one go about planning that especially in the restaurant industry and did ninnis also plan this like did you have a marketing budget from day one or did you go an organic route how did that journey happen as a rule of thumb for restaurant industry you should dedicate 5 to 10% of your revenue mm-hmm. into marketing okay especially now that there's so much of competition this absolutely. is absolutely important okay and we should not underplay it right but for us when we started out because we were struggling financially so much right forget about uh, marketing we did not have enough money to put up a decent sign board so the only uh, thing we could rely on for marketing was word of mouth publicity right. so we made sure that we treated each and every guest uh, so amazingly that they were compelled to tell their friends and family about us right so in a way uh, we were relying on um, eogc mm-hmm. even though we did not know at that time in 2014 that such a term existed yeah. hmm. uh even today our marketing budget is not at par with industry standards but we think it's okay because uh, if you treat your customers right they kind of become your brand ambassadors absolutely but you can't ignore marketing you can't say i don't want marketing right you have to uh, bring awareness about your brand and for that marketing is important right absolutely and no this is a term to note 5 to 10% to all my clients guys please note this yeah. Yeah. you mentioned something that you know like i've always seen a very creative approach on your page yeah and it has a very homely vibe hmm. um hmm. as i said people who have been uh, you know lucky enough to meet you and uncle great but in general your team your space always gives that homely vibe and when i see it it's very difficult you know when you see it on social media also to have the same vibe right you guys have managed to do that so is that strategic or is that something that has happened and that's the philosophy of the company so uh, like i said in 2014 it was like a do or die situation for us mm-hmm. me and ankit did not have any life our restaurant was our whole life that is where we spent most of our days So uh you know how people use their Instagram as their personal journal mm-hmm. we used to use our brand page as our personal journal to document our lives right and our life was the restaurant correct so instead of posting those unrealistically aesthetic food pictures uh, we would post the real raw bts right. of a restaurant so there'd be a text like uh, aaj ka breaking news and it would have broken plates ka picture <laughs> which had actually happened that day <laughs> or it would have something like a uh, spilled sauce on a freshly cleaned floor and people would like really relate to it right. because it kind of fed their um, curiosity about what really happens uh, in a restaurant kitchen right so if you see our page now even though the uh, posts and the uh, reels are shot professionally mm-hmm. but if you see the stories there are uh, they are still very raw and very real because that's not a social media manager that's me reporting live from a commercial kitchen amazing so that kind of uh, rawness that uh, unprofessional vesa wala uh, touched up wala stories nahi hoga which is great yeah that's what yeah so you are equally involved like you yeah. manage the page sometimes yeah. yourself as well oh, while totally. oh, that's cute sweet so uh, you know as i said now ninis has three verticals like right. ninis kitchen nero's and bake by ninis true all three are favorites for everyone now yeah uh is the communication and strategy developed individually for all or is there a storyline that you a common storyline that you follow for all three brands because as i said all three brands have a very different audience from right. what i see right but see as a consumer right so if you could tell us a little bit about that so while ninis is a family restaurant nero's is more experimental and it has a more gen z vibe to it right whereas big by ninis is a middle ground between two because it targets both their audiences Correct. so even though they design language the brand identity the graphics font strategies communication is different for all three mm-hmm. but deep down they all have the same ethos which is to serve 
wholesome, no nonsense, comfort food, right, which is reasonably priced. Hmm. So that is that is one thing which is common to all, right. And and that's the coming. So pricing, yeah, pricing has, is reasonable for all three. Right, food has to be excellent and I think for all. Relatable, three. something True. which is totally. relatable. Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. great. So uh, as you said, uh, one is the pricing bit that yeah. you mentioned. Yeah. So this is something for restaurants. Uh, it's always a struggle because now what happens is a lot of brands from outside Ahmedabad are coming to Ahmedabad. Right? True, and they can't believe the fact that the pricing Ahmedabad restaurants offer. Yeah. So my question here is a little technical. And uh, that is, you know, like I saw the other day, I follow Nero's and I saw the other day you offer like 800 or 800 yeah, 900, yeah. 900 with tax um, uh, brunch. And it's like a fabulous brunch menu. Yeah. I saw the man menu and I was like, oh, I have to go to this place, yeah. right? Do you think it is due to the, due to Gujarat being a very price sensitive market, you have to kind of price it that sorts or... Um, you know, as Indian brand catering to mass audiences, pricing matters a lot. What is your take on it? Like if, my question is, if Ninis would go outside Gujarat, would you scale up the price or would you manage this in general for the Indian audience? I think not just Gujarat, people all over the world are very value conscious. So if you want to scale up and if you keep your pricing exorbitantly high, then it's kind of going to limit your TAM or the total addressable market. Right. And you are going to be left with a very limited niche customer base. Also, for a restaurant to be successful, it should have a high repeat value. True. And that can only happen if you price your products right. So I don't think it's a Gujarat thing. I think this is applicable everywhere. So is offers something good or bad for restaurants? Uh, I think when you're starting out initially, mm -hmm. offers is good okay. because it kind of draws attention. Right. And once the customer has tasted your product and they like it, then they don't mind buying it even without offers. Interesting. Yeah. So since you're talking of customer mindset, tell me one interesting uh, customer experience that you ha had or a memory that you have that impacted your business overall. Uh, th that would again be 2014. Okay. Because we got our first uh, home delivery order and that is when there was no Swiggy in Ahmedabad and Zomato wow. was also not very popular. So we got it over the phone and I called my brother-in-law to delivery kar kya hai because we didn't have any delivery agents. Right. So he went and he's a CA, okay? He's a CA. Achha. Working in a high Achha wala firm. But he went and delivered oh, the order. Like, like, Haan, delivery like delivery. family support. Right. So he went and delivered the order and I still remember what the order was because it was a roll and a pizza. So that lady, she then posted a review on Foodaholics and she said the roll was decent but uh, the pizza wasn't great and it tasted like a ready-made pizza place. Achha. So we were so heartbroken. That one is not money, financial struggle. It was a trust in the food, it was a negative review. Like we took it personally, it was so sad. Right. So me and Ankit, we got another pizza made. And that, this time it was a, so the pizza that went was a thin crust pizza. Right. So this time we got a soft base pizza made. Mm -hmm. And we personally, me and Ankit went there with a the pizza, rang the bell and she was shocked. And we're like, hi, we're from Minis. Could you please, we're really, we're really sorry, but could you please try this pizza and let us know your feedback. Right. And this, I'm talking about 2014 when such kind of a customer uh, experience or such kind of customer service, service huh? yeah, was not, uh, was unheard of. Right. So in the evening, that lady again posted a review on Foodaholics and she said the pizza was fabulous, but I'm more touched with the fact how the co-founders owned up to their mistake right. and how they made sure that uh, the experience was a good one. Right. So what we learned from there was, just because we like pizza, don't pizza to someone else. Always, always ask the guest's preference. So have options. Definitely. And you are going to make mistakes. This is a high pressure job. But how you bounce back from the mistake That's and right. how you learn things from those mistakes mm. is what is more important. Absolutely. So that's what we always try to do now. Right. And that's, yeah. I think that's the best way. I think any brand, whether it's a restaurant industry or across, I think consumer and customer experience yeah. kind of scales up your brand to another totally. level. And that's extremely important. So tell me, are you guys planning to expand within Gujarat a lot more or what are the plans outside Gujarat? I, if you can kind of share a little bit with us, whatever little bit you can share. No force. Yes and no. Okay, so we are definitely uh, thinking of expansion, but 
it's in a very very initial stage right now and i don't want to jinx it so okay. <laughs> i'll share uh, yeah that's yeah, okay. that's absolutely okay we we as amdavadis of course are very lucky <laughs> to have you guys as like you know this is your home yeah. ground so yeah. jo bhi hoga hamare yahan to hoga so that's yeah, okay yeah. Uh, okay, so now I think uh, the last question would be: uh, What do you think the future of dining looks like, especially in the light of uh, you know recent global change? Right. I'm sure a lot of conscious changes have come uh, come across a lot of industries, and especially the restaurant industry. And how do you see Nini's uh, fitting into that future? I don't know about the rest of the world, but India say two things. कभी नहीं जा सकती दैट इज बाबाज एंड ढाबाज अच्छा सो जब कोविड हुआ था पीपल वर लाइक वेरी वेरी स्केप्टेबल स्केप्टिकल अबाउट द फ्यूचर ऑफ रेस्टोरेंट राइट बट वी एज अ सोसाइटी लव टू फीड पीपल लाइक ट्रीटिंग पीपल टू ग्रेट फूड इज आर लव लैंग्वेज ईटिंग आउट इज लाइक अ सोशल इवेंट फॉर अस ट्रू एंड दैट इज वाई पोस्ट पैंडमिक वन ऑफ द फर्स्ट इंडस्ट्रीज टू बाउंस बैक was restaurants absolutely so i don't think uh, anything is going to happen to restaurants restaurants are here to stay mm-hmm. and so is nini's amazing amazing <laughs> but it's been such a delightful conversation with you uh, navneet i Same here. haven't met you a lot yeah. but yeah. i always look forward to meeting yeah. you so thank yeah. you so much thank for you for being to be a part of this interview thank you for having me absolutely thank yeah. you